Departure check completed. Live has been inserted. Release parking brakes. Commencing push. All legends clear. Start that wheel. Start sequence is two then one. Check. Start right engine. Starting right. Oil pressure. Okay, so he's uh, switched the uh, start switch there to start. And then uh, pretty much in the meantime, uh, take the fuel control switch to uh, run. So that initiates the start sequence. And then by about 33, 34% into here, the fuel is going to come in. Here it is. And the uh, rest of the uh, start sequence is uh, continuing, should I say? That's enough. Start the left engine. Starting left. Same thing, the uh, start. Switch to start and fuel control to run. Once again, ladies Oil and pressure. gentlemen, welcome on board today. This is your person speaking. Please direct your attention Guys, to the Guys, thank, uh, thank you very much for all the Thank you very much. There is an instruction card in your seat pocket that illustrates the safety equipment on board this aircraft. Regulations require compliance We've got, uh, with this information what sounds like as a well as full crew instructions, the lighted information signs and posted placards. Fasten your seatbelt by inserting the metal tip into the buckle. Tighten by pulling on the belt. To release your seatbelt, lift the metal flap on the buckle. It is our policy the, uh, that you keep your engine starting. at all times. Thank you very much for the follow uh, uh, dance floor analyzer. Welcome on board. Pass on your seat belt. Locate the nearest exit to you and note that the nearest exit may be behind you. In an emergency, lights will illuminate the aisle. The cabin is pressurized. If there is a loss of cabin pressure, a panel will open and oxygen masks will appear. Remain seated with your seat belt fastened and pull a Alright, so we're gonna wait for the, the end of the of push. Oxygen. Oxygen will be flowing to the mask even though the bag may not inflate. Cover your nose and mouth with a mask. Place the elastic band around your head and tighten by pulling on the ends. Secure your own mask before assisting others. Your life jacket is located under your seat. Hello, Leon. Tighten the strap Hi. and once outside the Good aircraft, afternoon. pull on the tabs to inflate your jacket. If the jacket fails to inflate, use the tube placed near the neck. Your jacket is equipped with a light that will automatically illuminate in water. Back and break is set. This is a non-smoking flight. Can disconnect. Is not See you on in the, the right with a pin. Bye bye. Batteries. Cabin lights will now be turned off. Reading light buttons are located over your head. Thank you very much for your attention. Alright, so it's gonna disconnect. Let's see how he does that actually. Interesting. Nice. Oh great. I've never seen that before actually, never really looked at it. Flaps 5. Flaps 5. Flaps 5. is disconnected recall is checked I'll do the flight controls and the rudder is good have a good trip that means more or less that he's gone he's walking away yeah the 
Doug is going away as well. Normally before like waving they go quite far, at least beyond like the wingspan, so that uh, they know we have to look for them to kind of wave us goodbye. Uh, and then we kind of forget about them, so if they were still close to the aircraft that's it, it's gone. Before taxi checklist. Before taxi checklist, anti-ice, auto, recall, checked, flight controls, checked, ground equipment, clear. Before taxi checklist, complete. So I think I've said before as well to use DCM with FS to crew uh, to kind of sequence uh, the checklist uh, from uh, phase to phase. Uh, you need to actually take the items and uh, complete the checklist yourself. FS to crew doesn't do it for you. And if you don't do it, then every time you call for a new checklist, uh, because the checklist is not sequenced, then you will come back to the first uh, checklist. So to get the sequence of uh, checklist going, then you need to uh, you need to uh, complete each uh, checklist and take the items uh, yourself. That's a little uh, that's a little thing. Uh, Multi crew experience actually like takes the items, but FS2 crew doesn't do it. Clear left. Clear right. Right, let's go. See you next time. Uh, JWIND 54 yeah, that's correct. The uh, the oxygen masks have about... Uh, uh, depends on the aircraft, uh, possibly, but it's about yeah, 20, 22 minutes, something like that. But 20, 22 minutes is enough to get you uh, from uh, from cruise to uh, to 10,000 feet where you can breathe okay. It's another matter if uh, you're flying above uh, mountains and you can't uh, go down straight away to 10,000 feet. But otherwise... Wow, that car is... Wow! See the speed? It's Dubai driving. Wow! Runway entry procedure. Check. Clear on the approach. Runway three zero right. All right, let's go. Take off, check thrust ref, check thrust set. Knots. Hold. Check. Check. 
400 feet. Thrust ref, we have speed. Check. Check. Autopilot. Check. For the autopilot to have a look around. But, uh, flight down path scenery is fantastic. It's really good. Climb. Flight level zero eight six set. Yeah, the scenery is amazing. I really like this one. Took me a while to get it, but... Uh, Flaps one. Flaps one. We're going to do this one. Right, so we have to keep 220 knots in the turn there. If I have to choose one airline, um, I don't want to be a ch uh, chauvinistic, but I would probably go for. Uh, uh, Air France, yeah. Not that. Just for the for the conditions, these guys are on a are on a very cushy number. So uh, yeah. How many landings in real life per month per year per month? It can be. Uh, yeah, per month it can be about six, eight, depends. Uh, a year. Uh, multiply by 11 with the leave with the bell vacation in the middle flaps up flaps up After takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist. After takeoff checklist complete. Cool, here we are. Fantastic view there. The scenery is really, really, really good. FPS is suffering a little bit. I don't know if you can see that on stream or not. Alright, anyway. Whoa! The, the track keeping is not very good. It's only doing 250 knots. I should follow the magenta line like what... Uh, uh, currently, but there is kind of uh, all over the place. Wow, that's not very good. Right, so we'll go to I think it was three two zero. I wanted to go initially. Ten thousand feet. 
ne problemo, 10,000 feet. 20,000 feet. So at uh, Tardy, I think, looking at the flight plan. Tardy, Tardy is the boundary going into uh, Muscat. Okay, fantastic. Muscat. Today I uh, started the time during Unicorn. We are talking about it today. I remembered it. So we got 12 minutes flying time and. Uh, on the sector time is 23 minutes, so the taxi and took about 11 minutes. It was quicker than I thought. Uh, actually, uh, this direction it's 310 only because we're flying uh, kind of uh, eastbound, so it's an uh, odd fly level number. And then at uh, La Clou here, we can turn. One to go. One thousand feet to level off. Good afternoon then to you, uh Ankit zero zero seven. Right, so yeah, we'll level off 310 and then at La Clue uh, we'll climb to 320. Uh, we'll follow the flight plan. Sometimes the flight plan is uh, for the fuel is better than the uh, uh, than the uh, FMC. So we'll see how that works out. Of course, at some point it's going to be uh, an ETOPS flight. At La Clou. Ah, actually, I was supposed to go up to 330, then go down to 320, and then later on go up to 34. Ah, oh, I will stay at. Doesn't make sense to descend. Makes sense to kind of step climb on. Like, yeah, step climb, but to descend doesn't really make sense. So we'll stick to uh, 31, and then 32, and then 34. Sorry about the few changes. Yeah, there's a bit of mountains there on this side. Let's have a look. Not that we're gonna see much of the mountains, but yeah, this is supposed to be some mountains. You can kind of make them out a little bit. Uh, good winds up here, still above a jet stream, 83 knots. I'm surprised that um, uh, cost index 300 uh, is only giving decimal 842. Yes, cost ladies index 300. In just a few moments, ah, ladies and gentlemen, in a few moments you'll be able to start watching a video. I think nowadays eh, it's uh, kind of on demand, that eh? they don't like wait to. <laughs> like it was like 20 years ago where you had to wait, and then they were like uh, starting the entertainment in flight, and it was like one film to watch. These days are long gone. The uh, entertainment systems are nowadays very, very good. The speed might increase when we turn the corner there because we'll get less of a tailwind component and maybe the uh, the Mach number will increase. I'm hoping to see at least the Simul 85 with this cost index, so we'll see how it works out. Yeah, 
If the FMC does not follow the climb profile or is unable to achieve cruise level, then can you tell what could have gone wrong while planning? Um, depends. Was it like only a short route and you didn't ma you didn't manage to uh, climb all the way up, or because on a long route like, for example, like this flight today, I mean, uh, climbing to a uh, cruise level three three or three four zero, uh, you you manage obviously uh, fairly quickly. Uh, so maybe it was a short uh, short route. Mozilla, yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice game, nice uh, simulation, I would say. Yeah, it's very nice. A great success. All right, so we're gonna turn around the corner here. Hey, thank you very much for the uh, kind uh, gestures, my PPL. Thank you very much. That's very much appreciated. You are the man today. Thank you very much. So yeah, we'll wait until uh, the turn and then climb in the right direction. Going uh, kind of southwestbound. We'll take an uh, even flightable number, so we'll go up to a uh, 320. Are you guys familiar when I say like uh, even and odd flight level numbers? Actually all the levels are ending with uh, zero, so uh, theoretically they are all uh, even, but um, the term uh, even or odd uh, doesn't actually refer to the, to the zero actually refers to the to the second number so if we see uh, here fly level 310 we talk about the one and uh, the one obviously is uh, is uh, odd now we go up to 320 oops he pressed the button without me really wanting to press the button <laughs> It was a two-hour route and flight level two nine zero. Oh yeah, so you you should have uh, uh, you should have managed uh, to climb to a cruise level, definitely. Yeah, unless unless maybe you were you were full of fuel on this thing. If you had like hundred and forty-five tons of fuel, and and you were basically at max takeoff weight. I don't know if you would climb to fly level 290. You could be just on the limit. But otherwise, I don't see... Am I getting this right? You couldn't get to your cruise level. Oh, Mozilla, thank you very much. Zilger, thank you very much for the follow. Three two zero. And as I want to level off. So yeah, so you're still stuck at the symbol eight four two. Now it's actually a uh, bit of a headwind component because the wind is coming from this direction. So you can see the drift is actually quite uh, quite big. We are heading 201, but the track is uh, 191, so it's about 10 degrees of drift due to the strong wind there. So the the, the aircraft is kind of uh, flying sideways a little bit. But I'm puzzled the Mach number is not increasing more than more than the Yeah eastbound flights uh, eastbound is is usually uh, odd and westbound is kind of uh, even but in some places it's kind of more divided on the north and south 
for example, in uh, in France, in Spain, in Portugal, where the geography is more kind of uh, north-south than east-west, uh, then the flights to the north will be um, even levels, and the flights to the south will be uh, odd levels. And uh, as uh, Giant Unicorn is saying, uh, some uh, airways have their own levels as well, so... Yes, I'm a little bit puzzled by the cost index there. If we go to 340, let's see if it's gonna increase. Let's climb. Oh no, the the mag number is decreasing now. Oh man, that's not good. One thousand feet to level off. So yeah, that's maybe uh, also a limitation uh, in the simulation, is the cost index is uh, is not... Uh, yeah, only virtual fuel, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking of uh, putting a, a number myself there. Decimal 85. So let's see. The symbol eight three nine is uh, sixteen and twenty nine point six on the fuel. Take a note of that. And if I go decimal eight five. Fourteen and twenty nine point four. Ah no way man. No way. It is only two minutes and two hundred kilos of fuel. Ah, uh, that's that's not. That would be very good if it was like this in real, because in real, as as soon as you start like um, flying like beyond uh, the decimal uh, eight three eight four, uh, then the the fuel uh, consumption uh, increases like uh, quite uh, dramatically. Uh, it wouldn't be uh, a matter of uh, two hundred kilos of fuel. Uh, on the uh, estimated fuel on arrival here, we had uh, 29.6 and now it's showing 29.4. You will take like a serious hit on the fuel if you are accelerating to a decimal 85. It wouldn't be just a 200 kilos difference. The time obviously you would uh, fly a little bit faster, uh, but the fuel consumption would, uh, would uh, uh, be uh, seriously hit. Uh, the highest, um, uh, is it flight level 431, I think, the the ceiling, but you'll never get to uh, 43,100, uh, uh, if I remember my limitations, actually. Uh, let me double check this quickly. I'm not giving out false information. I think it's uh, 43,100. Let me check. Operational limitations. 43,100, yeah, I'm not talking rubbish, that's correct. So many numbers and stuff to remember, but yeah, that was 43,100. I actually went uh, once up to uh, 43,000. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, once and uh, that's it, just to see what it's like. But. Uh, I'm not a big fan of climbing high, first of all for um, pressurization, because the pressurization basically uh, works to the to the maximum. So if you go up to uh, 43,000, the uh, uh, let's have a look air synoptic there. Oops. 
Uh, why do they open on top of each other? It's a pain. Anyway, yeah, if you... Um, this one actually gives more information. If you go up to uh, 43,000 feet, uh, the cabin altitude there is going to be up to about uh, 8,000 feet or something like that. So you're going to climb very high in the cabin. And it's going to give you also a maximum differential pressure. So basically you're working the uh, pressurization system to the to the maximum. So it's not too great because then if you have a depressurization, I mean it doesn't happen every day of course. These uh, depressurization problems are quite rare. But if it does happen then when you're at 43,000 feet you've got basically uh, uh, no uh, reaction time. You know they call uh, the time of uh, useful consciousness. Uh, they say that... Uh, is at 40,000 feet uh, the time of uh, useful consciousness for, for pilots is maybe I don't know 15 20 seconds at the most so from the time it goes poof uh, you're gonna be like feeling your your guts and your whole body kind of emptying itself you're gonna feel a big rush of air coming coming out of your body big mist in the fly deck and in uh, 10 15 20 seconds max uh, you have to have the reflex to go and like grab your mask and put the mask on your face uh, good luck with that uh, might be a little bit and then you're basically uh, kaput you know you're you're getting hypoxic and then you just fall asleep and and go kaput so uh, yeah if you're very high it's not a good idea What's not good as well at uh, altitudes is uh, so high is the, the radiations, the cosmic radiations. The higher you go, the more radiated you get. So, if you're at um, kind of around the equator, it's not too bad. But if you climb to uh, 43,000 feet, like over the North Pole, for example, uh, then you'll get. Uh, You'll get a good dose of radiations, that's for sure. Like for example, the um, uh, the Northern Lights, you know, the uh, Aurora Borealis, or whatever it's called. Um, it's all very nice, it's all very pretty. When we fly quite up north, sometimes you, uh, you see them. And uh, people are like, uh, above all, like the, the girls in the cabin are like, wow, this is really nice, beautiful the green the purple colors dancing in the night wow like yep yeah, that is very nice but you know what that means though it means that you know the uh, the magnetic field is kind of protecting the earth from all these uh, radiations and what you see there is the uh, kind of um, materialization or the the kind of phenomenon like taking place right in front of you so that means that radiations and like the magnetic field are very close to uh, to us and uh, that's the kind of chemical reaction we see or whatever in front of us you know so that means that we're getting uh, radiated that sounds like from brazil bon dia welcome to the stream We are like uh, guinea pigs to tell the truth. Um, has never been really studied, um, and uh, guys nowadays like above all like flying 900 hours a year, flying over the poles, and it's not good. Flying in northern latitudes is really not good, and we don't know what it's doing to our body. But uh, yeah, to go up to uh, 43,000 feet, uh, basically you, you would need to be uh, very light, very, very light, because uh, at kind of normal passenger loads and fuel, uh, you wouldn't go uh, that high. Uh, so at the moment, the maximum is uh, 351, which I think for these um, simulated conditions is uh, fairly realistic. So uh, yeah. To go up to 431 you would need to be empty basically positioning an aircraft from a to b or something like that 
So an, uh, an empty aircraft and maybe, I don't know, 20 tons of fuel. So you would have uh, a zero fuel weight, which would be the, the dry operating weight, more or less. So the, the dry operating weight is the, uh, the weight of the aircraft uh, with uh, no passengers, no catering, no uh, cargo, just just the weight of the aircraft. So for this one is about 167 tons and uh, and maybe just uh, yeah about 20 tons of fuel to make like a short trip somewhere uh, one and a half two hour flight and uh, yeah in these conditions you could go up to uh, 243,000 feet but otherwise you would never get up there no we don't really um, we don't really put the mask no um, no, we don't put the mask when we go up there, no. Uh, we practice putting the mask on sometimes in the simulator, but uh, in flight, uh, not as a precautionary measure, no. No, no, we don't do it. Yeah, I quite fancy the idea to fly into Seychelles, so um, we'll see what it's like later on. Uh, I think it's going to be an ILS approach runway uh, 3-1. If, uh, if you guys are interested, I'll uh, post you the the link of the um, YouTube video I'd made. If I can find the link, that was like landing on uh, runway one three. 